pretty interesting. You know, when I, um, after I got saved, uh, I never had an issue. The, the fellow that I listened to on the radio, I, that's how I got saved. I was searching for the truth, what happens to you after you die. It was a two-year search. I, because of a, a radio ministry, I heard the gospel, and I came to trust the Lord Jesus Christ as my own Savior. That was in October of 1978. And soon I began attending a Bible-believing church, uh, and, but I still never, the Bible, issue, Bible was never an issue. Now, we were using a King James Bible, but I felt like the words of God were really in the Greek and Hebrew. I had no problem reading. I had an NIV. I had a, when I first started reading through the Bible, I used the King James Bible because that's what I started with. Again, I, and I was brought up as a Roman Catholic, so early on I was just using a Catholic Bible. Uh, the, a big family Bible, actually, that uh, we got when we were married. And I, as time went on, I had that all marked up and everything. But anyway, so I, I was reading through the Bible. I started with the King James, and then you could go faster if you had a good news Bible, so I did mm -hmm. that. Of course, I didn't know really what it is. Judah, Israel, I couldn't tell the difference between any of them. But all, all I knew was just read the Bible and you'll learn something about the Lord. And I wanted, I was hungry. So as time went on, again, I believe that uh, because our pastor would always say, well, this is what it says in the original Greek and so forth. And I thought, well, that must be really, that's what I ought to know is the Greek. Um, that's, that's where the word of God, the real words of God are. And you have, to, you have to know those languages and so forth. Well, throughout my early Christian life, I, I was an information-aholic. I, mean, I would get information on all kinds of things. And, but one, of the, one time I came across a tract by a, uh, from a church in, uh, it was a publication too, Plains Baptist Challenger. It was a uh, fellow E.L. Bynum in Texas that had talked, I, he wrote a tract and was called King James Fans, question mark. And it was about this Bible version issue. Mm -hmm. Who knew? You know, I, I thought they were all pretty much the same. So that got me started. I started to read more on that. I, used to write away for information, and I started to read more about that particular issue. Uh, somebody gave me Peter Ruckman's materials. Uh, I read his material, and I started to see that there were differences. That's the, the key, I think, is the uh -huh. differences. And many times since, I've shown people differences. Now, to some people it matters, and to some people it doesn't. They tell me, well, it's the message that counts. Okay, fine. But I really, you know... When you get saved and you give up your old life to something new, we don't have any authority apart from the scriptures. And to me, it was really important. Like you, I just want to know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was looking, I, and I guess I come at it with a presupposition, and that is that there has to be a book that contains the right words. And like Will, it's interesting, the books that you mentioned, uh, you know, I've read those same books and uh, have them, and then I've read books on textual criticism and so forth. But in the end, it keeps coming back to the same thing. The book that's had the most fruit over the past 400 years, which is always denied by the other side, is the King James Bible. They say, well, that fruit doesn't really matter. Hmm, really, fruit doesn't matter. Results don't matter. That's not the way I see things. I think results do matter. And that book has had a greater influence it's shaped the English language. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's been the uh, basis of many revivals. I think it's the real deal. Uh, and that's after reading both sides of the story. So anyway, I came to believe that the King James Bible indeed contains all the words and only the words of the living God.